Fáilte Roy Varish, the Corrige. Um, you're all very welcome along to another video from Gundog and Fly. Now, if you're hoping to see a load of fish caught, you can switch off right now because this video is probably the first fishing video I've ever produced without any fish caught. It's strictly a tutorial video. Um, in this video, you'll meet Brian, who's been fishing for quite some considerable time and he's fairly proficient in all techniques and methods but um, he tells me that he's missing a lot of fish whilst wet fly fishing so he asked me would I give him a quick run through on it so that will be more or less the contents of this video I'm out with Brian giving him a little run through on what I consider to be the best way to fish wet flies there are many ways to fish wet flies the technique I'm teaching Brian here is the one that I have found to be the most successful uh, over time. So that's it folks, it's just strictly tutorial, so if you want to see a load of fish caught, like I said, tune out and go back to one of my other videos. So I hope you enjoyed the video anyway and uh, that you find it instructive. If you're new to fly fishing, this is a great way to start out fly fishing. Wet fly fishing is a brilliant technique. Relatively speaking, it's easy to learn. So. That's it folks, enjoy the video and at the end if you'd like to uh, subscribe and uh, if you really want to support the channel check out the link in the description to my Patreon page. So once again, thanks for joining me. Time for Well this is Brian here who's joined me today for a little wet fly instruction. So Brian, the plan here is right to fish the single single wet fly is just to sort of drop it at that angle. Now you need to keep back as far as far as you reasonably can yeah. from the bank because even though the river is relatively high in that fish can still see you. Now we have a strong wind of course which makes it difficult to cast, but sort of that angle as best you can and try to drop the fly in close to the bank. as close to the far bank as you can and then just allow it to swing around. And if you keep as much line as you can off the water it'll tend to slow the fly down to the right pace because it's, it's running fairly swiftly. Yeah. So um, if you leave the full line in the water, it'll Quick accelerate cross. across too yeah. quickly and trout might slash it and miss it yeah. or not even see it because it's traveling so fast. So you want to try and slow it down as best as possible. And of course, just lifting your rod and keeping the line yeah. off the water. So land or egg. not to be getting caught up on the other bank either. That's inevitable, that's going to happen. A bit too close to the far bank. I know the wind is going to blow there anyway, it's just that that wind is going to make things difficult anyway. So. Brian is fishing a size, a size 14 single wet fly. There. Off you go Brian. That's it, I'm trying, that's it, trying to keep the... It's, it's dragging a lot, um, it's, it's probably, uh, I'll get that for you, let me down there in front. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off some of the fly's plumage as well because it's tending to stick in the surface. It's getting caught in the water, kind of. Well, it's dragging all over the place and that's, although it should be okay, like it's, that's one of my flies I'd say. Yeah. Deja. No, it should be fine, it's just, um, give me that, just one second. Let's see. Yeah, what you need to do is when the fly hits the water, just allow it a little slack like that, and that will allow it to sink. Rather than when it hits the water, have tension on it, which makes it drag like that. You see yes. what I mean? Oh, I see so, all right, difference. when you cast your fly, just drop it, drop your line in front for a second to allow the fly to sink, and then allow it to swing, swing around like that. Okay? Just let it get subsurface. Yeah, it? exactly. Just to let it get under the surface. There you go. Right. Did 
the minimum of false casting because you want your fly to stay wet now if you false cast too much you tend to dry the fly out and again you'll get the drag problem so allow a little slack you need to you'd be better off trying to hold a rod way higher um, let me just show you again All right. If you hold the rod higher, the line will be off the water, see? Oh, yeah. right? And what I do then is, as well, and it works for me, is I just... A little bit of action. I tend to walk along a little bit, right? I need to fly to work properly, so if I stand still like that, right, it's going to drag too much. Yeah. Right, because of the, the current, right? So what I'm going to do is allow it to sink, and then what I do is I walk it along and make sure that it stays subsurface. Now, I'm only moving my feet fractionally but what it's having the right effect you see what i mean yeah. the fly is subsurface at all times if it tends to drag on the surface what i do is i just take a pace forward leave it sink again yeah exactly so you're keeping the fly subsurface and that's that's um probably you like a lot of people just fi fish down across and allow it to drag right yeah. now drag can be useful at times but in this case we want the fly to sink just under the surface and come around without creating any surface um, noise or activity, if you yeah. know what I So, because it just works better if the fly is just under the surface. So I hope that makes sense to you, right? So we're going to, we're just going to move down here. All right. Now I'm doing what I told you not to do, is false casting, but we're moving from place to place. All right, again. Now, you see, I'm pulling it towards me, allowing a bit of slack. That allows the fly to sink. Yeah. Keep me fly off the water. If he starts to appear on the surface, dragging around the place, I just take a pace forward. Yeah. Okay? You see the way it's fishing? Now the wind, of course, is blowing it around again. Yeah. But you see the way the fly is what I would deem to be fishing properly. Okay? It's just subsurface and moving across. Yeah. And it's moving at the correct pace because I'm keeping as much line off the water as possible it's like a kind of downstream nymph fishing which is what a, a wet fly really is a, yeah. okay see it's dragging now so what i'm doing is i'm moving forward and allowing it to sink yeah okay now that's it move forward that's it now you see when you know when you, don't pull don't pull there's no need to pull it if you pull it what you're doing is you see the olive hatching there yeah when you pull if you pull the line through this hand what you're doing is you're bringing it up to the surface you don't want that to happen it's dragging even more yeah you don't want it to drag on the surface because it doesn't look natural you know trout might slash at it but yeah most likely won't take it if you move down to where those rushes are drop it gently over there now if it starts to drag lift your line off the water that's it now that's what I that's the way I fish wet flies and um, you can just chuck it in and drag it around the place and hope that something will catch it but you'll have an awful lot more success yeah. by fishing the fly correctly see that's it exactly when you spotted the drag you move forward which yeah. did exactly what's required so now that makes sense doesn't it yeah come around slowly yeah Run a little higher, Brian, and then you'll keep more line off the water. That's it, good man. That's it, lovely. That's it. And if it drags, move forward. Exactly. Now lift the line off the water, nice and gently. Good stuff. You're getting the idea now. Am I moving through that water too quickly? No, 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 you're not. No, you're moving at lovely pace. You. The water will dictate the pace that you move at. Unfortunately, they're, they're like with the river relatively high like this, um, you're going to be forced to move relatively quickly because we have speed in the water, if you know what I mean. It's, it's running fast. Now, Brian, this is a lovely little run of water here, right? Now, this would be my plan of attack. I, uh, this is what I would do. You see that weed bed out there? Yeah. What I would do is I would try and drop my line at that angle. So my fly drops, say, four or five feet the other side of the weed bed. So right? Aim for the fence post. Though. Aim for that fence post, exactly, right? So now your fly is in that slacker water there, but of course, out here, if your line, if you leave a lot of line out here, it's going to drag your fly quickly out of there. So up off that fast. Yeah, water. try to keep it as much as you can. Now, it's not a perfect science, but try and keep it as much as you can off the fast water. Try to keep the fly in there. 
as long as you can and then by keeping the line off the water what you're going to do is you're going to tease your fly across the run or the tail of the run you're going to tease it across and try and keep it at subsurface given that it wants to rise to the surface because of the the pull on the line and the speed of the water etc you do whatever it takes to keep the fly coming across at a nice speed across there and that's what the fish are expecting to see if the fly drags too quickly or is drags across the surface they might come up slash at it they might come up look and turn away they're much more likely to take it if it behaves like a natural insect yeah which is what you're trying to do so are I glad reached of course there's no guarantee you're going to catch a fish with any given cast but you want to maximize your chances so as you keep the line off the water. Excellent, Brian. Very good. A little bit, yeah. That's it. Now try and keep the line off the water because the fish is most likely to be in the slacker parts. That's fishing nice now. Just watch out for the drag and try and minimize it. Good. Right, that's lovely Brian, you're fishing it grand now. Fishing down along. Yeah, keep going. Drop it over there near that weed bed. Now again, try and keep the line off the water, that's it, good. Now move down with it, if you walk down with it. That's it, try and keep light tension on it, but not too much. That's it, good stuff. Now your fly is fishing perfectly. Excellent Brian, very good. You have the idea now, that's yeah. what I consider fishing wet flies properly. Now there are many methods and people will tell you all kinds of different ways. This is the one that I found to be the most successful. There is of course the old, just chuck it out and let it drag around. Yeah, you'll have a certain level of success with that. But if you, if you persist with this, it's a, a way more productive way of fishing wet flies. Very good, Brian. You have it. You're, you're mastering it now. Exactly. That's lovely. Now the way you're moving, you're, you're making the fly do what it should be doing to represent a natural insect. 